So this is just a quick video talking about how to tell if a joint needs you to do a lot of myofascial release work on it and to repair the damage of long-term mineral deficiencies. So in about 15 other videos, I talk about the fact that if you have really any long-term mineral deficiencies or imbalances, then as a result, anytime you have inflammation, which is a completely normal process, but it's constantly happening in different parts of the body, that inflammation becomes incredibly harmful and destructive to both hard and soft tissue. But that if you correct these nutritional deficiencies and imbalances of minerals, over time, you can completely undo all of that damage and heal all the tissue in your body in a way that medicine is unable to in any other way. So, I have spent half my life doing office jobs and half my life doing very physical jobs in restaurants. And because a lot of neurodivergent people have genetic differences to mineral processing that worsen the effects of long-term mineral deficiencies, it was like every time I would start a different job, every time I would change what I was doing for a living with my body, it would really change the way that my body aged and my soft tissue just like degraded over time. In my video called like the intersection and the union of Ehlers-Danlos and fibromyalgia, I talk about the difference between black and white inflammation and tissue mineralization and gray inflammation and mineralization and that you're going to get very different symptoms, you're going to get a very different presentation based on lifestyle factors that determine where you most have inflammation in your body. So, at the beginning of January, I started a job as a dishwasher in a restaurant. And prior to that, I'd mostly been doing closed captioning full-time for like six years, where I was sitting in the same position, typey, 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 all day, every day. And that wore down my body, my joints, my tissue in a very specific way. And then when I started doing dishwashing, it changed the way that my body was being worn down. And it immediately caused a huge impact on fingies, right? My fingers have mostly been the bane of my existence. They hurt a lot. People always laugh at me when I'm working in a restaurant because I'll walk through the kitchen with my hands in the air if there's people around because I don't want to touch anybody because it hurts so much for anything to touch my fingers. And so I have very, very small hands and my fingers are very hypermobile. And so there was a lot of things where I would lift heavy things using two fingers. Like I have most of the stress on my fingers and as a result, this finger especially, because I'm right-handed and I would be, I'd be doing the fine motor skills with my right hand and the, and the brute strength skills with my left hand. So this, my left pointer finger especially, just hurts so bad. The, the joints are, they're not swollen because swollen implies inflammation, heat, redness. So they're not inflamed. They're enlarged because minerals have been deposited there. I cannot get this thing to sit straight. The more strain I put on this joint doing my job, the more minerals accumulate in the tissue there. And as a result, it started popping like crazy. I used to have to pop all my knuckles multiple times a day. And as a result of all the minerals I'm taking, all of that has gradually gotten better. But when I started working as a dishwasher, especially after a few weeks, this one, this joint right here, started needing to pop all the time and hurting like hell if it didn't pop. And so, A, I quit the dishwasher job for a lot of reasons. B, I've been working a lot on this joint with my favorite silicone lip brush. This is so great for myofascial release on fingers especially. So I've been breaking down all the minerals around that joint and it doesn't need to pop anymore and it only hurts a little bit sometimes. People think that this damage to their joints is irreversible, but it's not. If a joint pops all the time, and if it hurts when it doesn't pop, you can reverse all of that damage and you can make it so that it doesn't need to pop anymore. And so 
ultimately that it doesn't hurt at all anymore. I've also talked in a lot of videos about how when I was like 19, I slipped when I was practicing my splits. I didn't have my split yet fully and I knew that, but I slipped and went into a split via dislocating my entire right femur. And because I had an eating disorder at the time, my mineral situation when I was trying to heal from that injury was just a nightmare. And so there was, just, there was like a chunk of scar tissue the size of a baseball sitting in the hip socket where the head of my femur was supposed to be. And my femur couldn't sit where it was supposed to. And as a result of that, my, that joint was very hypermobile because it couldn't even get to the position it was supposed to be in in the first place because there was constantly physical pressures both pushing and pulling it out of its proper alignment. And also, it needed to pop all the time and it was agonizing when it felt like it needed to pop but I couldn't get it to. It controlled my life, it controlled my mood. Everything was about how much my hip and my hamstrings hurt. Finding a way to avoid how overwhelming the pain was, just trying to dissociate entirely, just to separate from my body because it hurt so bad and it was relentless and painkillers didn't actually help. But then a physical therapist taught me about gua sha. And this was when I was taking like a little bit of magnesium. So I was doing better minerals wise. So I started taking, it was like three or four different types of magnesium at that time. And a physical therapist showed me gua sha and I was able to, over time, break up that scar tissue so much that my hip, my femur went back into its proper place. It's not hypermobile anymore. It's healthy. It's genuinely flexible from a muscle standpoint rather than hypermobile from a joint standpoint because that's something that's really important to understand. The difference between mobility and flexibility. Mobility is about joints. Flexibility is about muscles. So many people who are hypermobile are told that they're flexible when in fact it's the exact opposite. Their muscles are incredibly tight. It's just that their joints aren't bound by like ligaments. And so they can just go around the tightness of the muscle and get into these extreme positions despite the fact that the muscles are still really tight. So I've gone by focusing most of my efforts on this joint I've gone from unbearable agony all the time, needing to pop like three times a day and just being like, it just felt like it was on fire if it needed to pop and it couldn't. And to having extreme hypermobility and constant subluxations that meant I really had to limit how I moved my body. There was a lot of things I couldn't do because it was unsafe with my very hypermobile femur. I've gone from that to it doesn't hurt it feels a little tight sometimes. I still have a little bit more scar tissue to break up. It pops once a day and it's the lightest, softest pop like of any joint in my body where it used to be huge and deep and meaty and gross. And it like, it's just, it's like 90% better. All because I corrected mineral deficiencies and imbalances and I spent a decent amount of time working with my hands to break down the accumulated minerals, the scar tissue, and that part of my body. And when I say I focused on this, I really didn't. It was like, because my everything with my face was such a disaster too, that was really more important. So I would say for, for most of the past like four or five years that I've been doing this, in terms of hours spent working manually on different parts of the body, it was like 50% face, and 50% the rest of the body in general. But of that 50% that was the rest of the body, that was like 70% of my hip, on my hip. So 70% of 50%, if you, if you care about numbers, because I don't. So if you have pain, if you have enlarged joints that have to pop all the time, if nothing helps, then there is something that will help. It's just that doctors don't know about it and so they can't tell you. You have to get all of your minerals. It's, it's so harmful when you don't. And 
lacking only one mineral is actually a lot worse for you than lacking all of them. Because when you don't get what you need, your body takes it from bone, but it can't pick and choose what it takes. So the things that get taken out of bone but aren't immediately used get deposited in soft tissue. And that's the cause of so many of the problems. So if you are lacking all your minerals, then your body breaks down bone and it uses all of it and it's really not that bad because that's what your bones are for. If your government has decided to put toxic amounts of calcium in all of the most commonly consumed foods, especially by children and poor people, and you are massively deficient in one single mineral and just lightly deficient in most of the other ones, then it's, you know, like, let's say that magnesium, I don't, I'm making up a number. This is not the correct number. This is a guess just to make a point. Okay. Let's say magnesium is 10% of the contents of your bones. So 90% of what the body takes from bone gets deposited in soft tissue. Whereas if you're deficient in all your minerals, 0% gets deposited or a, a minimal, you know, like obviously some's going through, but it's very minimal because it takes that out of the bone and it uses it. It's the stuff that it doesn't use that's so harmful. So it's so important that everyone come to understand the relationship between calcium and magnesium, that the less magnesium you consume, the more toxic calcium is, because that one imbalance causes so much illness and suffering that would otherwise be completely unavoidable.